Hi everyone, welcome back to the Helen Olivia Virtual Workshops. My name is Lindsay and I'm gonna be leading you through class today. And our workshop this time is a pastel tropical workshop. So super fun for the summer. I've got all my materials here and I'm gonna walk you through everything as we go. So you're gonna need your bag of materials, your bucket of blooms and greenery and uh, a workspace and your floral tools. So if you haven't already, go ahead and get your floral clippers or your floral knife. Both is great. Um, if you don't have either one of these, you can use a sharp paring knife, like a small kitchen paring knife, nothing with serrated edges because we want, we want really smooth, clean angled cuts. Um, and serrated edges just will damage the blooms. Same with kitchen scissors. If that's the only thing you have on hand, just be mindful that they're sharp. If they're not sharp, again, you're just gonna run into damaging the ends of the blooms and we don't want that. So grab your tools, get your vase out of the bag. And the first thing you're gonna do is fill this vase up with water. You wanna get room temperature water um, or a little bit cool to the touch water. You don't want anything too hot or too cold. If it's too hot, especially with um, things like the mini green hydrangea, it'll blow open the blooms really quickly. If it's too cold, it'll shock the stems, especially for something tropical like these. We don't want um, to hurt the stems because these are kind of warm weather flowers for the most part. So in your bag, you've got your recipe sheet. Your recipe sheet has all the ingredients, including all the hard goods that we're using today. So keep that handy um, so you can follow along as I point things out. You should also have a few other things in your bag. Um, we've got a couple pieces of wire. We're gonna wire a succulent later. We've got a, hy a hyacinth steak. We have these dry palms. And then we've got our bleached ruscus. And you can set all of those aside for later and we'll utilize those as we go. And then you've got your chicken wire is also in the bag. So go ahead and roll up your chicken wire. And what I like to do for a piece this size when the ends are both smooth, I like to tuck the smooth ends toward each other to create that cylindrical shape. And then I like to tuck the pointy ends in towards the middle. So then you've got a really nice open cage on the top. You don't want to stick the pointy edges upwards facing you because you might damage things as you're putting them in. So you want that really open spread out cage. Um, and that's going to be our structure for everything. So once you've got it like that, you can kind of squish in those sides with the pointy ends. And then you're gonna place that in your vase. We're using a white five inch cylinder today and the chicken wire, you want it to be about flush with the top of the vase. And everything will settle nicely into here once you've got that in place. The other things you have in your bag are a Cymbidium orchid, which is already in a water tube. So this is in a water source. Don't worry about putting that in anything. And then we've got a succulent. This is a big succulent and we're gonna wire this carefully together later. So now that we've got all that organized and laid out, we are gonna go through our buckets and start building. And since this is a tropical design and we've got a lot of modern greenery elements, we are going to create a three-sided design. So basically one side you're going to pick to be the good side or the front, and then one side will be the back. And we're going to line the back with um, our greens, like our aurelia leaves, etc. So since we've got multiple aurelia leaves, we're definitely going to do a three-sided design and it's going to be fun and funky. Um, so bear with me because I'm going to be turning this around a lot. I don't want to show the back of it to you the whole time, but I do have to also get a good vantage point. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is grab our mini green 
hydrangea. And be careful, also there's flexi-grass in your buckets. If it's easier for you to grab that right away and set it to the side, go ahead and do that and we will utilize that later. So take our mini green first and we're gonna frame out the size of our arrangement. When we're using mini green, we want to pop any of the low-lying leaves off. So anything that's, that might fall below the base line, we're gonna remove it because any sort of leaves, leaves down here will just cause rot in your vase and it will make everything die a little more quickly. So you wanna just remove anything that might sit in the water. It's totally up to you if you wanna leave these leaves on. If they're close enough that they're hugging the bloom, then I think you're totally fine to leave them. And a good frame of reference for a vase this size is you wanna cut the stems about as long as the vase because as we're going, you want all of your stems to go as far to the bottom of the vase as you possibly can get them because as things are drinking, the water level will drop and then you don't want anything to be out of water. So we're gonna place that first hydrangea and then place our next one. Same thing goes here. I'm removing any of the low line leaves. If you have something damaged, you can pull that off. A damaged leaf, a damaged bloom. If there's a part that's broken like this, you can just pull it off, cut it off, um, whatever works for you. And then we're taking, making sharp angled cuts on every single piece today. So take our third mini green, and we are going to place that here. And so really you're just splitting that base into thirds. And then we're going to use one up in the top. Um, and when I'm splitting into thirds, the part that I have two, or whichever side you pick where you have two, that's going to be your back. So we want more of a hefty base. So I'm going to have two mini green that are the back of the arrangement. So once we've got those set in there, um, we're gonna take our fourth one. And our fourth one is gonna be kind of our central guideline for how large or how tall these things are, um, these arrangements are gonna end up. So for something like this, you're gonna leave this stem longer than the other ones because you want it to stick up a little higher. And you can always cut more off, but you can't make it grow back. So make sure when you're cutting things, be very, very conservative with your cuts at first, and then you can always go back and trim more if it's too long or if it's protruding too much from your arrangement. So now that we've got our mini green placed, I'm gonna go ahead and grab for the Aurelia. The Aurelia is a great backing piece to an arrangement. So. We are going to make those angled cuts, and I'm going to say that for everything. Um, and I'm going to place these as close as I can to the mini green in the back of my arrangement. So you want the dark green to be facing the front of your arrangement, and the lighter side is the back, and that will back your arrangement beautifully. So with these, I'm gonna tuck two pretty close together because I am kind of creating that back wall. And when you've got something like this, you want the stems to be as long as possible so it's hitting the bottom of the base, but not too long where your leaf is floating up too high. So it's a little hard to see from this angle, but I've got two one off to the side. I'm kind of going more to the right with these. We've got so many different greenery elements that we're gonna kind of group things. Um, with tropical arrangements, it tends to look kind of more fun and modern if you've got groupings of things rather than everything kind of scattered throughout. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my third Aurelia mixed right in with my other two. So I've got them really kind of off to one side they're still creating a back for this side, but not um, anything too crazy. And I've got kind of a space over here, which is totally fine. We've got other things we can fill. So the next thing we're gonna grab are these cordyline tips. And these are a really fun, pretty tropical flower. With something like this, we are able to split them. So 
since there's so many leaves and I want to put as much of this to use as possible, I've already, I'm already seeing the space where I can cut right in the middle. And then out of that came two pieces. If you can't do that, totally fine. Just trim the bottom. But I just want to utilize as much as possible as we go. So with these tips, they create like a really fun tropical look. And what I'm doing for these is I'm tucking them right in with in the side where I don't have the Aurelia. So the Aurelia is kind of based on this side and then the quarter line are over here. So since we've got multiples of those, um, I might save one for later and I'm gonna use that if I want a fun greenery accent at the end. So, Let's go ahead and place our two and our third one we'll go back in with later when we kind of have a better idea of where we want things to go. So same thing goes with this one. I'm splitting mine into two pieces. So I've got this and I've got this. And also the single leaves, if you've got single leaves, for this size arrangement, they actually are long enough to use on their own. So if you have any single leaves that you want to maybe group together, we can go back in with these later in a little grouping like that and add a little accent where we might need it. So for now, I'm gonna take the piece I cut into two and as I'm looking at this from the front, I'm going to concentrate that greenery over here but now I do want to have some symmetry or some kind of mirrored elements. So I want to use one piece over here. So I've got this one piece and I'm going to stick it kind of low on this side. And it's all about kind of balancing things out. So as you go, and don't be afraid to adjust things as you go. If you don't like the placement of something, just remove it and move it elsewhere. So now that's our other piece of quarter line. And then I've got mine saved for later. So now I'm going to grab for the umbrella fern. The umbrella fern is such a fun, pretty, Fern. We love using this. We use this a lot in our retail work um, and for modern things like lobby arrangements, etc. With something like this, you can either use your floral knife or your clippers to make an angled cut. It cuts really easily. They're very um, delicate stems. So since we're all about creating that balance, I've got the height over here from this greenery. So I'm going to tuck my umbrella fern low on this side. So now that we've got that placed low, you can see how the, all the elements are starting to really blend together. And the next thing that we're going to grab is our uh, dried palms. And I'm grabbing these now because these are just something that are a little hard to add later on because they are quite stiff stems. So. I want to cut these clippers. They're dried. They don't need to be in water. They will be for this, but it's not important for them to be the perfect length. You can really adjust these based on where they end up. So I'm going to stick two of mine on one side and one on the other. So right away I've placed one here and I'm going to group another with it. So we've got two together and I want them at different heights so they're not just a little exact pair. So there are our two and it's a perfect place to stick them between your Aurelia leaves and um, your mini green that's in the center there. And then for our third one, I want to create a lot of depth and layers to this. So since I've got these tucked in the back, I'm going to put one that's a little more to the front on the opposite side. So we can really create that balance with all the elements in here. And don't be afraid to stick things quite far out in this arrangement because we've got a lot of cool things that we wanna show off. 
So that is where I've got my third. So now that we've got those placed, I am gonna go ahead and place the horse tail. And the horse tail is a fun kind of bamboo like element and it can be super dark, super light. It's just a fun tropical piece. Since they're quite large, I'm gonna place them now so I don't have any trouble getting the stems in later and we're really just gonna build this greenery. So I'm gonna split them up and if they're long enough to split into two and utilize, then great. If they're not, then just leave them as is. So right away, I've got two over here to one side, and I've got one more that I'm gonna play with right in here. And once you've got those pieces placed, we've got two more, or however many you have, just kind of split them up into groupings. And since, again, we're all about this balancing out the look, I'm gonna place two lower on this side. And just be patient because it's already getting crowded in there. So don't worry about it taking a little while to get it through the chicken wire. So, and again, feel free to adjust anything as you go. Okay, so that is my green up for this arrangement. So now that we've got everything green in here, other than the flexi grass and the succulent, um, I am gonna go ahead and use this flexi grass and this stuff is really fun because what you do with this is you can bend it and create really fun shapes. So when you bend it like that, you can really play with the height of everything by pulling some down. So you can have it really scattered like that, or you can keep them all quite uniform if you like that. I'm gonna go somewhere in between where I like them. So I'm gonna group them together. You're gonna bend them over and be careful because if you give them a fold, they'll have like quite a pointy head, which I just accidentally did for that one. So you've got your grouping and then you can kind of play with the height. So I'm gonna play with the height a little bit, but I'm not gonna go too crazy. That's how I'm gonna leave mine. And I forgot to mention, but we have zip ties in the bag. And you're gonna take one of your zip ties and you are gonna put it around right where you had pinched it. And you're gonna pull this really tight. And once you have your loop and you want it quite large because of the height of everything in here, you're gonna pick your place that you wanna put it in. So I like to trim the zip tie, and then I like to trim everything so the bottoms are quite even. And then you're gonna pick where you wanna put your flexi grass. So I am gonna put mine over to the left, like that. So see how you get that cool hollow shape and it just adds more of a modern feature. Uh, the next thing we're going to put in is our bleached ruscus. The bleached ruscus, I have one piece, you might have one or two. Um, this is something that you can perfectly split. So you can split it right there and then you've got two usable pieces. This is just a nice light accent for these. And again, we're just going to split them up. and utilize the white in two places. And these also do not need to be in water, so it's totally fine if it's kind of floating a little high in your arrangement because it's not gonna get damaged. So 
That is the last of the greenery other than the piece I have saved um, and the succulent, which we're gonna add in later. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab four of my roses. So we've got Carpe Diem roses today, which are these beautiful peach. And they're really, really pretty. They have a great lifespan. You can blow on the center if you want them to open up a little more. And then for all your roses, we're gonna go ahead and clean them all. So by cleaning them, we're gonna remove all the low lying leaves. Be careful of any stems. I mean, sorry, thorns. If there are thorns, you can take your knife and put the stem on the table and gently cut off any of the thorns. Um, you can also just pop them off with your thumb. So for every single rose that we've got, we're gonna remove any of the guard petals, so any of the damaged petals. Um, you can go ahead and remove those. We also, these have a lot of color variation, so it might seem damaged, but you can leave on anything that you like. So if you like this little pink edge on these, that's totally fine to leave. If you want them to all look a little more uniform, then you can remove that. It's totally up to you. Just remove whatever you don't like the look of. And then remove all those leaves. And we're just gonna go through all of them and keep doing that. And then we're gonna place these. So once you've cleaned all of them, we can start placing and be careful of those thorns especially if you're not wearing gloves like me. So then this is our last. And once we've got this one ready, we can put them in. So I'm gonna take a look at mine from the front and I'm going to decide where to place my first little grouping. So since, since we've got seven, I'm probably gonna do a grouping of three and then a grouping of two and another grouping of two. So. Right away, I see kind of near this bleached ruscus on one side that I am going to have a little grouping there. So I'm going to do my grouping of three here. And for your roses, you want to do sharp angled cuts. And again, you want them to be at least as long as the base. And when they're at least as long as the base, you can put them low. And then for anything else, you want to keep those stems longer because this is an exaggerated shape design. And that way things don't get lost in there. So see how I've got one that's higher and that means that the stem I left a little longer so it can really spray out. And I'm gonna keep one stem even longer than the others and I'm gonna spray it out in between there. And once I've got that first grouping place, and I've really got that one grouping kind of facing off to the side, which is totally cool in a modern um, tropical arrangement like that. The next thing I'm gonna do is a grouping of two, and I'm gonna do one low near my bottom mini green, like so. One a little bit higher right nestled above it and you want to kind of stagger them. You never want them to sit, you know, right on top of each other, directly on top or directly to the side, just because it kind of looks like a set of eyes or a snowman. So just stagger everything and really keep your stems long um, in this design. And then you can always trim if they're too long, but just because the greenery is so wild, the longer the better to start with. And then you can easily pull it out and adjust. So now that I've got that grouping of two, I'm gonna tuck some in over here. And I'm gonna kind of hide them back here with my ruscus. It's kind of hard to see past the um, greenery there from that angle. But then I've got another one, and then again, I'm gonna leave that stem really long because I want this to really pop out of the arrangement. So I'm gonna stagger that right there. And you want them spread out enough because we've got some of these larger elements that are gonna have to tuck in between things. 
Um, so as you're putting them in, try not to cluster them all really closely together. You really want to kind of have a grouping, a grouping, and a grouping in three different places so there's room for other things and other elements to be added because they are quite large, these other things we're adding. So the next thing I'm going to add is my protea. Protea is this really cool tropical element. Um, it's really popular in some like tropical wedding bouquets. It comes in white, pink, really cool colors. Um, and yours might look a little more closed than this. It might look a little more open than this. They open quite beautifully. For something like this, that has a hardy stem. You can cut it with clippers. Be very careful if you do use a knife or scissors with this. For our protea, I already see the spot that I want it in. I'm gonna break up these roses right here and lean my protea out to the side. And the cool thing about protea is it looks cool from every angle. So it looks cool from the front, it looks cool from the side. I'm gonna angle mine out so you can kind of see the side texture of it. And again, keep that stem long and then if you can adjust or need to adjust, you can just pull it out and re place that so I've got my protea right there that then we're going to go ahead and grab this which is a pink ginger plant really really pretty and tropical and since I've got a big pink element here I'm going to put my ginger out to this side over here and again, this is a hearty stem, so cut that with clippers is my suggestion. And then I'm going to pop this in. I'm actually going to move my palm a little bit back. And I am going to put the ginger right about here. So when you're placing something or getting ready to place, you can use the vase as a measuring tool. So since I do want it about this high, I'm going to cut to about where I have, maybe a little bit shorter. And with that, it's kind of foolproof um, based on how you cut it. How you measure it. And it might get a little tough to stick into the chicken wire, so just be patient with it. It's a really cool, fun tropical element. So now that I've got my ginger placed, I don't like the look of where this is. So I am going to move my horsetail, which is again, like these little bamboo stick looking things. And so now I've adjusted that a little bit. Perfect. So the next thing we've got is the um, purple macaras. So these are purple macara orchids. They're gorgeous. They're just like a fun pop of color in this tropical pastel arrangement. And I am going to put the whole stem off to one side. I'm going to tuck it right in here because if you can see this, there's kind of a gap between my aurelia and the other elements. So that's where I'm going to tuck the macaras in. And again, using the vase as a measuring tool to see the perfect length and then tuck that right in there. And see how that just gives that really pretty pop of purple. And the last few floral elements we have are these anthurium, which are gorgeous. They're peach anthurium and they are a really fun floaty tropical piece. So with these, you can really kind of float them out quite far. If you like them a little more tucked, you can do that. Um, but they're just fun to play with. They're cool and heart shaped. And, but this is kind of how you can go a little wacky and it still looks so cool with an element like this. So I'm going to do it a little dramatically. Um, you can tuck it more in if you'd like, but I just want to show you kind of the impact they can make if you use them quite um, in a quite dramatic way. They're very fun. 
and a nice, so I'm gonna keep these together. That's what I would suggest. If you want to split them up, then I would do one high and one low, but I'm gonna keep them together. It just makes a little more impact. Keeping those stems long, cause I'm spraying them out of my arrangement. And I've got one there and I'm gonna go with one even higher there. And I need to look at it from the front because I am going to adjust placement. Keeping one high, really high, and then one, I'm gonna tuck in a little bit. There, and then I can see where I want my succulent and my orchid. So now that I've got my anthurium placed, I have everything in except for the orchid and the succulent. So with the succulent, what we're going to do is wire it. And this can be tricky. There are two wires if you mess up. Um, if some of your succulent crumbles off, that's totally fine. Um, it's a little bit tricky of a process to get used to. But, and where is my hyacinth steak? Oh, there it is. And then we're gonna use this to stabilize it. So what you're going to do is right in the center of your succulent, as close to the middle as you can, but a little bit off to the side, you're going to insert your wire and you want to poke it down until it comes through the back. So once it's through the back, you're going to pull that down about halfway. Once you've got that down about halfway, you're going to create a small loop and you're going to bend over that other piece of wire and you're going to insert it next to where you, it's a little hard to see from this far away, but see that loop and you're going to insert it kind of across the middle of the succulent because you want to really hold that tightly on and then you're going to pull down with your loop. So it should look like that and you've got your two pieces hanging out of your succulent. And once you've got that wired, you're gonna hold your hyacinth steak right up close to your succulent and you're going to wrap the wire around the steak. And you wanna hold it as tightly as possible and get the wire as close to the base of the succulent as you can. So we've got one more piece of wire and what I'm going to do with that piece is really wrap tightly around the base. You don't want the succulent to flop off with the steak. So tightly, tightly wind as close to the base here as you can. So just keep wrapping that wire. It's not going to be pretty on the bottom where the wires are, but it's going to be effective. So see how my succulent is sturdy on the stake. If you really are having trouble or if it's falling off and you have a hot glue gun, you can hot glue the steak onto the bottom of the um, succulent later on. Um, and the succulent is soft enough where you can kind of insert the steak a little bit into the base, not into that heart, hearty base, but right next to it, you can kind of insert the steak. So then it's quite secure. So now that you've got that wired, and again, it doesn't look pretty, it's just wrapped around because you want it to be secure, you can trim any extra wire. And then this is going to insert into our arrangement. So with the steak, again, you really don't want to cut this too short because we don't have more hyacinth steak for you. So 
keep it long and then again trim it if it's too crazy too long but I love I've already got the spot exactly where I wanted to put it I've got a gap in between my two rose groupings here and so I am nestling my succulent right in there and adjusting that ruscus a little bit and then the last thing we've got is our Cymbidium Orchid. These are a beautiful blush color, and I want to kind of camouflage this mini green that's right here. It's hard to see from your angle, but I'm gonna place mine right in that gap next to my Protea and above the rose. So that is everything except for this greenery that I had saved from earlier. So what I want you to do now is kind of take your, take a moment to look over everything, make sure you like where everything's placed, make sure you like how things are falling, things are draped. This is your time to kind of edit, adjust, and what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of greenery um, in the back here because I, it is a three-sided arrangement, but I don't want the back to be super vacant. And once I've done that, see how I've kind of backfilled it so it looks a little bit more full from the back? Then I'm going to kind of adjust anything that I see that I don't like. And again, I've got those few extra greens that I left for the very end. And this is when you can really utilize them. And again, when you're sticking that orchid in as your last element, it does not need to be touching the water because it's already in its own water source. So if it's really like floating up on the mini grain, that is totally fine. And I'm actually gonna move my Succulent over a little bit. There we go. Last little tucks of greenery. And that is our final tropical arrangement. It's really fun, festive for the summer. It feels like a party piece. Um, it's great for like an entryway or um, your kitchen counter or something. It's just really fun, colorful, and it's got a lot of cool textures. Um, and adjust anything as you see fit. If you want your bleached ruscus to be a little more noticeable, you can move it more towards the front. There's a lot of different things you can do. Um, but yeah, just adjust anything that you might want to move around. And then as you're caring for your arrangement, you just want to be sure you're adding fresh water every day. Um, with tropicals, they are a little more, they're better in the warm weather as they are tropical. Um, so you want to just be adding fresh water and just be mindful. They don't love super cold, so don't try to stick it in the fridge to preserve it or anything like that. Um, it should be totally fine near a window, near bright sunlight and just check that water level every day and add fresh if it seems like it's low. But that is it, that's the Tropical Workshop. I hope you enjoyed, it's a super fun one for summer and we love doing these classes with all of you. So thanks again for joining us for our virtual workshops and make sure you sign up for any of our upcoming ones. We've got a lot of new ones that we rolled out on the site and we look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you so much.